Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining our talk. In this talk, we are going to talk about continuous queries on Apache Pulsar using Flink SQL. So first of all, let me make a self-introduction. My name is Nen Lu. I'm a soft staff software engineer at Stream Native. So currently, I'm leading the effort of real-time computing product by integrating Apache Pulsar with different kind of uh, big data ecosystems like Apache Flink uh, on top of Kubernetes. So I'm also an uh, Apache Incubate Heron Committer and a PPMC member. So in today's talk, we were mainly discussing two, uh, two parts. The first part would be Apache Pulsar and the Stream Native, and the second part will be Flink SQL on Stream Native Cloud. So first of all, what is Apache Pulsar? Apache Pulsar is an open source cloud native distributed messaging and a streaming platform, which uh, consists of three major parts. Uh, they are messaging, stream storage, and processing. So for the messaging aspect, Pulsar offers multi-language clients such as Golang, Java, C++, and Python. And it also offers the ability to using the Pulsar IO framework to ingest IoT data into the messaging pipeline. And also yeah, it allows the change data capture uh, connector like DBZM to forward those database changes into the messaging system. Underlyingly, Pulsar will uh, store your data in different type of storages uh, for low latency storage and we utilize the Apache Bookkeeper. And for code data and uh, not, not frequently needed data, we can, uh, Pulsar can help offload this data from memory and from, from Bookkeeper into cloud native storages like GCS, Amazon S3, and so on and so forth. And they are actively, they are also active working to integrate Pulsar with different type of uh, data lake. So finally, the processing part. Pulsar is uh, very extensible and uh, integrates very well with the different popular frameworks. For interactive queries, uh, Pulsar can support Presto, Arduino, and Hive uh, nowadays. And for stream and batch processing, Pulsar seamlessly integrated with Apache Flink and Apache Spark. And besides these um, popular frameworks, Pulsar also developed its own processing framework called fun Pulsar Functions. And it's used for simple data processing and uh, ETL jobs to simplify the development and deployment overhead. So yeah, that's the overview of the Apache Pulsar project. And uh, it includes like messaging, like storage and the uh, processing part. So here is a short list of the nowadays Pulsar adapters in their production environment, uh, like Tencent, like BestPay and Jopin and Iterable. So they are, it covers like use cases from different industries like uh, uh, social media, uh, like uh, online, online, online shopping and, uh, and payment, FinTech payment stuff. So hopefully next time when we join in the Think Forward meeting, there will be more uh, adop adapters listed here once they uh, uh, agree to agree as we to do that. So, uh, after the short, short introduction overview about Pulsar project, I would like to introduce the company uh, behind Pulsar a little bit. Uh, our company is Stream Native, so it's founded by the original developers of uh, Apache Pulsar and Apache Bookkeeper. So we built a cloud native event streaming platform that enables enterprise to easily access data as real-time event streams. And also we are actively uh, working on integrating Pulsar with different fra computing frameworks like uh, Apache Flink, as we will be discussing in the following and other frameworks to make sure that the data uh, can be, the data value can, value can be uh, discovered via these kind of uh, in time. So stream at Stream Native, we offer uh, Stream Native Cloud which is a fully managed enterprise SaaS offering of Pulsar. It can massively scale without ops overhead and it was built for hybrid and multi-cloud environments. There are two types of the cloud offering. Uh, the first is cloud hosted, which people can provi provision the cluster resources in our cloud, uh, cloud portal. And also an another one is cloud managed, 
which we can help develop the whole stack of the Pulsar uh, service into your cloud environment. And it, it allows for stream across different public clouds for multi-cloud applications. And the payment is either as a pay-as-you-go model, and it can reliably scale mission-critical applications based on the traffic and their needs. A second offering is Stream Native Platform, which is a self-managed enterprise software offering of Pulsar. Uh, in, within that offering, there are Kafka on Pulsar features, which allows people to migrate Kafka client-based applications seamlessly to Pulsar backend without code modification. And it has the function mesh service for service streaming, which help people to schedule and the provision Pulsar functions in the cloud native way. And then there will be enterprise ready securities. And also we packaged a lot of Pulsar operators to help people uh, manage the workload, the daily workload. And it, it shares the same experience or has seamless uh, experience at the stream native cloud we offered in, in our household. So least but not last but not least, it is worth mentioning that Bevorica, which is known as the company behind Apache Flink, is actually a cloud partner uh, with us starting from uh, early this year. So uh, we are kind of closely working together with each other to bringing these two uh, communities together, as well as offering a uh, good sol best solution for these nowadays real-time data problems. Okay, uh, this just I just talk, discuss about the first part. So now we can get into the interesting part, uh, which is a uh, Flink SQL and uh, Apache Pulsar integration. So before we dig into the actual implementation. I would like to spend just one more slide to discuss about uh, Apache Flink and SQL. So Apache Flink is nowadays the de facto uh, streaming processing framework for big data. And uh, it, it offers, uh, serves different uh, use cases such as image-driven applications, streaming pipelines, and uh, stream and uh, batch analytics. It can be integrated or fetching data from different type of source like real-time uh, storage or database file system or KV stores. And once the data is feeding into the job, uh, Flink job itself, the Flink will be handling those uh, processing logic and then generate the results and then insert them into feed these results to different uh, uh, destinations. And for the Flink, API, they offer data stream APIs and table APIs, and even simplified SQL APIs. These are all the uh, APIs available for user to compose uh, different Flink jobs based on their own needs. So for Flink SQL, we think it has the ability to process real-time data streams and has the potential to unify the batch and streaming processing. And also it actually can serve various use cases, such as real-time monitoring, anomaly detection, real-time ETL jobs, real-time data applications. So can, that's kind of the reason why we are uh, first to like bringing Flink SQL to our cloud platform. And here is a architecture graph for like, uh, for how the Apache Flink and Apache Pulsar can be working together on the stream native cloud. So as we can see, um, the, 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 the Pulsar offers, offers unified batch and uh, stream storage. So the Flink can fetch real-time streaming data from Pulsar brokers directly. And uh, also it can read the uh, batch data uh, from the tiered storage, uh, from the tiered storage, which is offloaded by Pulsar itself. And the day to work together can covering basically most of the use cases nowadays. And uh, these integrations are actually built in, or it has already been, be built, been built on stream native cloud. So people can just uh, using Pulsar client or maybe Kafka on Pulsar protocol to feeding data into a Pulsar service and then uh, starting spin up a Flink job, whether it's written via data stream API or via table API, or even a simple SQL, SQL to reading data and the process from Pulsar and then generate the results to different uh, places for serving different business needs. 
So in our case, like we at step one, we first bringing this uh, Flink SQL into our platform work to work with uh, Pulsar on the cloud. So I think before I further like go into the architecture stuff, which is kind of very abstract, I would like to show people, show you guys uh, a quick and simple demo to see how uh, Flink SQL is worked is working in the in the cloud platform with Pulsar. And then we will be moving on to discuss about some of the implementation details. So here we go. Now, this is the uh, Pulsar cluster we have created on StreamMeter Cloud. Uh, I was just uh, checking different aspects of the cluster, like what are the tenants, what are the namespaces of the cluster. Uh, a lot of like uh, different uh, features like schema, uh, like uh, uh, dispatch rate, things can be tuned or setting by the web portal. And here is the topics page. So these are the pre-created topics. I will be using one, some of them for the following query demo. So it listed like the partitions and uh, some of the basic metrics. So this is the query UI and uh, this is a Pulsar cluster. So now I will be creating a Flink cluster for, for processing my job. So if it's like as simple as like typing the name, select some of the basic settings, and then ask the backend, the cloud backend to schedule these uh, components. And to save us time, I will just use a, pro use a provisioned cluster to do the uh, setting. So as you can see here, I se select the Spring 6 cluster, and it automatically connects to the backend Pulsar uh, cluster. And uh, translate all the Pulsar name, tenant namespace as a database and all the topics under the under the under that tenant namespace as different tables. So here we can check the uh, schemas available. So I will do a very basic query, which is a select star from uh, from the table green text file and then run it. So it's actually like a uh, be scheduling and submitting. Now I will be like ingesting some of the data into that topic now so after some amount of time we see that the ingested data can be uh, <coughs> fetched from the flink sql uh, and if you look at the bottom right uh, the the page number is increasing because the data keeps uh, growing and we will always see the latest data from <coughs> from this site and uh, it's worth to mention that we can also set up some options to ask the SQL to start from the earliest time. Okay, uh, here is a, compli um, a more complicated SQL, which is uh, we are doing kind of a streaming join um, and also the group aggregations. So as I hit the button start, and then it's like being translated and verified and scheduled and launching in the Flink cluster. So it takes some more time. So here is the result. Uh, like since uh, it's we are doing the join, uh, join work, so it will be updating the different kind of uh, record uh, as the data coming in. So yeah, let me stop that. Okay. Hopefully this helps you uh, look, have a bit of a uh, feeling of the how uh, Flink SQL is used in, in the cloud, in our cloud. Okay, this is the Flink demo class that I just uh, created. So it's kind of being finished the processing, uh, but unfortunately I will have to destroy it because our demo is uh, coming to an end. So tap the name and confirm the deletion. Then it will be just gone in a minute and here is the pulsar cluster we used to uh, send data serving all the topic serving all the data for the blink sql framework so and we try to delete that but unfortunately there is still like Flink cluster running so it will be the deletion will be failed and this is the uh, instance abstraction which holds all the resources we have nowadays Okay, so if we check again, so we look at the topic, green taxi file, the storage size incre increased a little bit because the newly ingested data. You know, okay, yeah, so I think okay, this is the demo I have for you guys. 
so that we have kind of a better intuitive intuition or feeling of the how this uh, work on the cloud in a cloud environment. And now we will be like going further to digging into some of the implementation details. Uh, okay. So this is an overview of the whole architecture for the stream native cloud, as well as the uh, Flink cluster. So, so what what we have built is a stream native control plan, which mainly responds has a component like cloud console, cloud API, cluster management, and account management. So whenever our user connects to the web UI, it's actually talking to this control plan to request it do all kinds of different type of works like provision a parser cluster, provision a Flink cluster and submit the queries to the provision of the cluster. And also, uh, once the parser cluster is created here, the applications can directly publish data into the parser cluster and sub subscribe the result from the parser cluster. And inside the stream native cloud pool, which is running fully on um, Kubernetes, we have these kind of different workloads like a parser cluster, Flink cluster, and a SQL gateways. And they all like working together with each other to serve the customer request and send the results. And there's a very special place called SN system namespace. On the line that there are different operators who is looking or monitoring the different the state of the uh, CRD resources and uh, help user to provision those computing resources. And uh, yeah. And uh, regarding this uh, provision, provision site, provision part. So what happens is like uh, the initial, once the you once I click uh, the uh, deploy button or provision button on the Flink cl cluster uh, provision page, there will be CRD created via the web UI and sent to the backend. So once the backend receive these kind of uh, requests, you automatically pass that and generate sub-component um, to provision and send those subcomponent provision requests into the cloud pool. So here in the Flink uh, case, we will provision two, two subcomponents. One is the SQL gateway, which is uh, acting as an entry point for user to submit SQL and send back the results. And the other is a Flink cluster. So which one, which is mainly responsible for computing the actual uh, result to do that, do the, do the, do the actual work. Um, so this, approach is fully Kubernetes-based. So everything is running on top of Kubernetes and the subcomponents are actually decoupled CRDs operators. So this offers the ability of uh, uh, changing the architecture at different time uh, and, then maybe ex and then maybe even like extend that in the future. And also these components are, and the, the cloud process cluster, they are all connected by a proper, uh, proper configurations. So they know uh, who to talk with and uh, where to send the result to. So a second part is about the uh, the interaction. So the, for the interaction, it's mainly like a user and user interaction and application interaction. So for the application interaction, it's uh, very as simple as um, using some kind of the OS token and to send send the send the data to a Pausa or reading data from Pausa. And for user interaction, user needs to log in into our web UI to uh, do the provisioning and send the SQL result. Once the SQL, SQL, request, SQL request is received, it will be accepted by the SQL gateway, which will be uh, doing all those kind of uh, translation, validation, and uh, cleaning work, and uh, then compile it into a, a job graph and send that to the Flink cluster. So once the Flink cluster received that, the job manager will um, find the task slots to run these kind of subtasks and the task managers will be receiving those uh, jobs and starting started to starting to uh, receive data from Apache from Pausa and then send the result to either, either SQL gateway to demonstrate on the web page as user can see, or maybe send the result to another uh, Pausa topic if we are using like some insert into a uh, statement. So there, this, the, the step is like establish a connection first and then send the query result request and finally get the query result. Um, so the next part is about the connection. 
So the connection is more is mainly discussing about how single gateway and the flink is actually talking to Apache Pulsar. The piece of uh, component we develop here is Pulsar Flink connector. So for SQL Gateway, it's using the Pulsar Flink connector to uh, mainly do some metadata reading and schema validation work, and also uh, help to do some of the kind of DML, DML requests and like create table and create database stuff. And for the Flink clusters or the Flink actual Flink job, it's actually utilizing this Pulsar Flink connector to reading data from a given topic and then send out the result back to the topic if, need, if requested. Uh, so we are kind of running a Pulsar on the 2.7.0. And nowadays it should be 2.8.0 now. And uh, there's a key shared subscription model uh, supported to, to help like uh, reduce the complexity of the Flink job. And there are exactly one semantics uh, to make sure that the data is uh, properly pro processed and there's no missing data and the result is accurate. And we also support for absurd Pulsar just to um, make users like much more easier. So um, I think I have kind of go, roughly go through the uh, how it looks like and the, the architecture of the stuff and then some of the critical piece of the components in this uh, in our work. So as as far as as and as for the future work, uh, we are kind of actually actively working on a new Pulsar Flink connector based on the new Pulsar Source and Sync API. The first part, Source part, is actually merged into AppStream Flink and is available in the Flink 1.14 release. And uh, we are kind of working on the sync part at this time. And the second work is about the Pulsar catalog abstraction. This part is about how to mapping the um, Pulsar topic and namespace stuff to the Flink understandable structure, like Flink SQL understandable structure, like table, like database and uh, other parts. And we hope to uh, enhance the current implementation so that uh, you are offering much more com flexibility and ability to uh, processing different needs like query a, query a table uh, for multiple topics and the setting and the customize the Pulsar client setting for different user needs and so on. And uh, these are like the open source work on the component work, component work we want to have. And the following is about some product side issue, some product side plannings. We want to launch long running query deployment in the followings so that the SQL can be a really powerful tool for serving people's different kind of uh, data, real-time data processing needs. And also, once the long running query deployment is done, we would like to offer in some kind of monitoring and the debugging tools to make sure that people understand what's happening inside the a query or inside a running job and quickly or easily identify the problems if there is any. So yeah, uh, I think these are the tech parts of my talk. And, and uh, I hope this uh, at this time after uh, listening to my talk for this time, for this long. Mm, I help you guys understand a little bit more about Apache Pulsar and a little bit more about Flink and Flink SQL and uh, give you guys uh, a quick test of what uh, Stream Native Cloud offering uh, for Pulsar and for Flink SQL. And if you are interested in more details, we kind of offering uh, on-demand on Pulsar trainings so just uh, check out the academy.streamnative.io website and uh, you will be finding much uh, more detailed knowledge and the skills from this course. And uh, we are also hiring. So if you would like to work with us, uh, you would like to work on these exciting uh, techno cutting edge technologies and challenging problems and exciting products, uh, please feel free to reach out to me or to our company website to find any job interests you and uh, we would like to uh, work with you guys as a talented engineers. And yeah, so let's keep in touch. Here is my uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and GitHub handle. If there's anything you would like to know or you or when you, you met in the in your production side in the after this talk, feel free to ping me and we will be I'm, I will be very glad to help around you. Uh, okay. So I think that's all.
these are all the things I would like to introduce in this talk and uh, discuss with you guys. It's time to uh, for you guys to ask me any questions if you are interested. Uh, thank you.